a Chanette. Within the family Gisneriaceae is a genus of plants called Acianthus. Now they're more commonly known as the lipstick plant. The reason why they're called the lipstick plant is because of the appearance of their flowers and how they emerge very much like a tube of lipstick. There are different varieties. Acianthus is a pretty broad species, um, or actually I should say genus. I believe there's close to 150 different ones. Wait, 150 species, I was right. Now some of the more common species that you will find and probably the most common species you will find is the radicans. There's also the black pagoda. And the one we'll dominantly talk about is the black pagoda, but we also have the other variations of radicans as well. Now if you have the black pagoda plant, your biggest lure is probably the appearance of the leaves and its distinctive design that you find uh, on the surface of the leaf and even brighter and more dominant on the underside. Now they are a trailing epiphyte, which means that they grow in trees. They are probably one of the more common houseplants you will find in stores because of its ease of care. They're very low maintenance and can basically take care of themselves. A couple things to keep in mind though. They do need very, very bright light. Now it can tolerate some direct sun, although I probably wouldn't leave it in direct sun for more than a few hours. So bright indirect light is ideal, especially since they grow along trees. They probably get some filtered light through the leaves of its host. I shouldn't say host, it's not a parasite. So we probably get a very bright light being that it's in the higher elevation of the tree height and the canopies but it would still be somewhat filtered being that it would be underneath all the leaves. So if that kind of gives you an idea of what bright indirect light is, that should probably be helpful. As far as substrate goes, I would definitely do a type of aeroid mix or even a mix maybe with a little added orchid bark just because it is an epiphyte. Its roots are used to having something meaty, having a lot of aeration. If your substrate is too compact or too wet, they're very prone to rotting. So you wanna have a lot of airflow and movement in its pot just to make sure that the roots are as close to how it would naturally grow along a tree. Now that goes with watering. The more airy that your soil mixture may be, the more frequent you may need to water. However, you wanna make sure that it drains very, very well because any type of water left behind will probably rot your roots. Now it is good to let your plant dry out quite a bit in between your waterings because when looking at the leaves you'll notice they are rather succulent. So you can imagine that they can go long periods of time without water so that the leaves are actually retaining and they're not soaking up too much. Now with most tropical plants or subtropical plants, they love humidity and go figure, houseplant loves humidity. <laughs> you do want to encourage as much humidity around your plant as possible. They do tolerate a average household humidity situation. However, if you do want to if you do want to force more blooms, you probably would want to increase the humidity to between 60 and 80 percent. However, a normal household humidity, which is between 40 and 60 percent, will still keep your plant perfectly fine and happy. Mine is currently sitting around 45 percent and I still get a lot of blooms. So Adjust that according to your environment. Obviously different climates or different areas may be drier or more humid than others. Pest pressures, I personally have not come across any pest pressures, but I'm sure that they exist. <laughs> you probably will get spider mites, I'm guessing mealybugs, thrips, some of the more common houseplant pests will probably like this plant because it does tend to be very juicy. So I would definitely just use prevention as your best form of managing any pests in your home and also having a very well draining mix or letting it dry out significantly between waterings will also help keep the fungus gnats at bay. Now Asianthus are known to be non-toxic so they're probably safe but obviously with any pets or anything you don't want them playing with your plants. Uh, at least you don't have to worry about it being poisonous. Now just to talk about the propagation a little bit. Oh, I just bit my tongue. Now just to talk about the propagation a little bit. Propagating this plant can be easy if you're giving it the right circumstances. I've had good and bad experience with it. 
mostly making sure that you're getting moisture to the plant without it sitting in too damp of a place and causing rot. The first time I propagated it, I put it in a wet soil mixture. I don't remember exactly what was in the soil mixture, but it rotted right away. It didn't do well at all. The second time, I actually put it in a prop box with sphagnum moss, and I didn't put it in the sphagnum moss, I just laid it right on top, and I got roots pretty quickly. That was probably the best way of propagation for me. And I know some people water propagate this plant as well. I do recommend when you propagate to keep your cuttings short, because too long of a propagation will also encourage rot. You might even want to remove some of the lower leaves just to make sure that it's not spending too much energy and that it's focusing more energy on developing roots. Now depending on the look you want your plant to have, if you really want to have a more bushy-like appearance, it's very important that you trim and cut it back. As the vines start to grow out, it sends all of its growing hormones to the very tips of the plant. So as it's growing out, it's sending all of the growth, 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 it's wrong with my brain right now. It's sending all of the growth hormones to the tip of the plant. So as you cut it, it will then encourage the growth hormones to go to other places, which will encourage a much more bushy appearance. Now, if you like the look of a very long trailing vine, Oh no. Now, if you like the look of a very long trailing vine, don't cut it. It will just keep growing longer and longer and longer. So it just depends on the look that you want. I have quite a few flowers or flower buds on here that you can probably see. And they seem to be growing more and more. And we haven't even gotten to spring yet. I definitely keep it in a warmer space. It does get a lot of light because I have it in my south window but I have it up kind of high at the top of my south facing window so it's not getting direct sun but it's getting all of the offset of the direct sun coming in through so you can imagine that it's very happy so I hope you love this plant just as much as I do it's a great plant to add to your collection if you're just starting collecting plants but all in all that's where I'm gonna leave you guys I'll put some extra footage here at the end close up of the plants so you can check them out and I hope you guys have an amazing and very safe week and I will see you guys all soon don't forget to like and subscribe please okay thanks bye